Uh, till now what we have done, we have uh, first discussed that why one needs stat mech, one needs statistical mechanics because we putting Brandly we cannot even solve the three body pro, you know, three body interacting system. That means three Leonard Jones particles we cannot solve. Boltzmann solved in dynamics with great uh, difficulty and lot of approximations the two body problem. In equilibrium stat mac, two body problem becomes equivalent to a quadrature which can be done in computer, but in simple problems like Leonard Jones we cannot even do that analytically. So this is one reason that one has to have a statistical, that is a technical reason and there is a more profound conceptual reason is that even if we could solve Newton's equation for all the, all particles, uh, I have heard a number of particles. If what do we do with that because that contains lots of irrelevant information. This term in statistical mechanics what is relevant and what is irrelevant is an extremely important concept. We have to extract from lot of things that are going on something which we observe in real world and also what is experimentally accessible, okay. So having said that, so that was the difficulty Boltzmann who was motivated by Maxwell's velocity distribution. Uh, to introduce the probabilistic description, he, he took it halfway, but he could not do very far. As I said, other side of the Atlantic, our uh, great Willard Gibbs realized that uh, there could be a different way of doing the things. Willard Gibbs did completely equilibrium statistical mechanics. This has to be understood clearly. While uh, Boltzmann was trying to do transport properties. Even today, transport properties of time dependent statistical mechanics starts with Boltzmann's kinetic <laughs> equation. So, this is uh, a very important distinction one makes. So, Willard Gibbs realized that you know that uh, many different systems which observe, they have same macroscopic properties, they must be in different microscopic states. So, it is a different microscopic states of the system that belong to a given macroscopic state then there must be a way to look into equilibrium distribution in terms of a probability. So the important breakthrough then came going from the trajectory or uh, time dependent stat mac or uh, time dependent distribution function which gives time averaging from there one wants to go to an equilibrium distribution. So, Willard gives realize that the simplicity gates in doing the equilibrium distribution that could allow him to do a probabilistic description. And he pro by that time, early 20th century, uh, his book was published I think 1903. By that time, probability theory was well developed. Mathematics of probability theory, central limit theorem, and all other things were well developed. So, he had now the he could rely on that. So, he then said he if I want to describe a probability distribution, then what are the probability distribution I want? I want a quantity which is a, uh, I could talk in terms of uh, thermodynamics, a th in terms of entropy, energy fluctuation, uh, these kind of quantities. He already had one result in front of me which is Boltzmann uh, definition of a function entropy. To what extent that entropy already thermodynamics was rather well developed, uh, entropy function or heat function was well known. That correspondence had been uh, had occurred to Boltzmann, I am not too sure of, but probably it was, but it was certainly Willard gives realized it. So he had that formula A is equal to K B ln omega, K B is Boltzmann constant, very appropriately put uh, there. And so now he had to find the omega and of course if it did not uh, and rest of the thermodynamics. How, how did he go about it? So he said okay, let me construct a an ensemble which is a huge collection of the systems. Each system has characterized by same number of particles n, same volume v and same energy all are constant. Now and then in this ensemble. He said, okay, how can I describe now probability distribution? He then introduced two postulates. One is that he wanted to do the average. How do I do the average instead of one way to of course time average, follow one system for a very long time. The other one 
you follow many identical systems. Now the idea is that many identical systems, billions and billions of identical systems of NVE, they are all in different microscopic states. Why? Because my number of microscopic state is enormous. It is billion to be to the power billion. So all these systems will be in different microscopic states. So that is a very critical uh, understanding that all, all my I can construct an ensemble means a collection of identical particles all of them in different microscopic states. Then if time averaging that I do by following in one system a trajectory for an infinitely long time or very long time that can be replaced by averaging over the, these different systems. Lo and behold what is the advantage instead of following the trajectory which is a time dependent quantity. I am going to talk of something which is time independent and that is the enormous simplification. I do not have to solve Newton's equation anymore which was the prescription of uh, Boltzmann. Then when he did that of course, he had these, uh, these ensemble picture of systems in different microscopic states and averaging over them is what is today is Monte Carlo simulation. Trajectory is molecular dynamic simulation. However, in order for the trajectory to be equivalent to ensemble, ensemble I have in all different microscopic states. You have to understand these are still at a conceptual level. Things are assumed, these are postulates and the verification comes you know with the results and comparison with the experiments. Then he said that okay my trajectory then must go to all the microscopic states that I am uh, representing in ensemble. Then comes the second postulate which is called equilibrary probability. That means all microscopic states are equally probable to be visited by the system and in a long trajectory they will be visited equal number of times. These are limiting things, infinite number of states, infinite time, infinite number of systems. So everything asymptotic where things are can be proven exactly. Now, when I say things could prove exactly, that of course happened only in 1980, one, one case, more than 100 years later almost. So, these thing that a system equally probable, but equally probable does not mean that it will be visited. So, the th two things I jumbled together should be separated. That comes as a hypothesis that all these states will be visited. That is the ergodic hypothesis that each state will be visited in the course of time. That means its system will not get stuck in a minimum. That haunted us in molecular dynamic simulation. That is why you cannot do phase transition just in NVE because it gets stuck in one minimum. Then all the new techniques like umbrella sampling, metadynamics that have been uh, invented and created are essentially to take the system out. So the reason that one has to be conceptually clear and study these things even more now than before is because of the connection with the modern stat mac and which is so powerful now it is reaching the state of quantum chemistry in the sense the packages are being available i see my students or other students getting like one of my students uh, without understanding too much got great results in uh, rotation of carbon monoxide nitric oxide and uh, cyanide ion in a aqueous binary mixture something which was unthinkable few years ago such complex system but that can be done now i cannot claim that the student knows very great of the concept of statistical mechanics and how to do coupling theory and analytical work, but the results are at the hand and at the end of the day results are that are important. That is what everybody wants from me. So statistical mechanics has come to that level now. So we have to uh, understand this little bit more detail to have a certain sophisticated, certain sophistication in our understanding, sophistication in our. So then from that microcanonical ensemble using a c equal to k l n omega, we derived the expression of pressure, expression of energy, d s d t is energy. So everything is now number of omega, number of microscopic states omega. Well done, that part was done. But then N V is a very um, uh, artificial system because it is a system which has same number of constant number of particles which is not changing constant volume, constant energy. That is not the real system. Real system which uh, a, a volume is fluctuating with phase transition, ice uh, melting uh, density goes up by 10 percent. 
then you have the uh, energy fluctuating because these systems are far more open in, in at least in chemistry and physics and in chemistry we have also systems where chemical reaction taking place, so any changes. So NV microgravitation is too restrictive, so the next stage Gibbs did construct a beautiful and brilliant monumental construction that he went over to constructing a super system out of NVT where energy exchange allowed, he put all we call NVT together, allowed interaction between them, flow of energy, then put it whole thing in a bath, let it be equilibrate, then put an insulator around them, so that the whole super system is an NVE of, if size n is my n number of particles, then size n by normal n, size n by v, size n by e are the number of particles, volume and energy of my super system. Now, he formed a uh, microcanonical ensemble of the super system and then showed by doing constant method of constant variation or Lagrangian multiplier, we can get a quantity called partition function whose logarithmic gives free energy and whose derivatives gives all the thermodynamic properties. After doing that, he was a genius of highest degree, he did not waste time in seeing movies or other things, he was single and he was always going coming back and forth from Starling laboratory probably he had all the time but it is amazing what he did, he did the grand canonical ensemble where now number of particles also exchange allowed, the same thing was done and he wrote a beautiful, beautiful uh, expression of uh, equation of state, PV equal to KBT, we remember all these are energy dimension, PV equal to KBT NN grand canonical partition function, then we also discuss uh, NPT which is used most in simulation and experiment. So, till now we have done all the ground work, uh, still keeping things fairly simple. We have done four ensembles and uh, we could have spent more time on NPT, but okay that is, uh, uh, I told you that it is essentially same construction, but the thermodynamic potential of NPT is gives free energy. So thermodynamic potential of microcanonical is entropy, thermodynamic potential of canonical is hemorrhage free energy, um, uh, thermodynamic potential of grand canonical is PV and thermodynamic potential of NPT is gives free energy, that what exactly thermodynamics tells us that exactly comes out to be true. So one of the major goal of statistical mechanics is to explain thermodynamics. Remember one of the things that we you read in thermodynamics, I do not know, we had a great teacher, uh, Professor Mahi Choudhury, who again and again told us one thing that A, thermodynamics cannot give you anything a priori, give the results, it gives certain relations. So thermodynamics does not give you what is the value of entropy, you cannot give it unless of course you integrate over CPT, it does not give, uh, so, so that means there is no, th it is not a theoretical machinery that gives you anything from first principles, that is the, that the correct statement. It does not have first principles, it has certain working principles which we call laws of thermodynamics, which will be fun to teach sometime the thermodynamics uh, in, a, in a very deep and fundamental level because that is a wonderful subject. However, here we do not pay for that time or course content for that, but here thermodynamics then comes out of statistical mechanics. So, one of the first idea of statistical mechanics was to explain thermodynamics and what it does, it does in a beautiful way, starting from microscopic principles, intermolecular interactions which gives you energy levels, then you everything flows, you get all the thermodynamics exactly. So, these are the theories, we are going to do applications of statistical mechanics and we will do the simplest thing first which is monatomic ideal gas, ideal gas, monatomic. So these two things are both very important, so so this is what we are going to do and it is an extremely illustrative and very, very nice and I saying when we studied these things we thought it is useless, but then later, much, much later when I did post drug drug DNA intercalation, okay. So we will do the, this is the following thing, what we will do today, derivation of the thermodynamic equations applying principles of statistical mechanics, these to derive microscope expression, model system we will do now, entire volume available to all the molecules, maximum translational entropy in ideal gas, this is a very important thing again. Because just you know in a bark I gave the lecture uh, where I had a path which is diffusion and entropy. There is a very hot topic now, even in active matter everywhere, diffusion and entropy. What is the role entropy plays? 
and okay. So, what goes in there the entropy called excess entropy and excess entropy, entropy system minus the entropy of the ideal gas and diffusion is e to the power excess entropy. You know, it is amazing how these things haunt you, come back to get you the results. Hmm. So, you know, those of us who thought that ideal gas, monatomic gas is not important, we are using it every day now, okay. So, let us now do, uh, do these things. Hamiltonian of this system is an interacting particles is H N T V is equal to n number of particles. So, Hamiltonian is just kinetic energy, there is non-interacting, so there is no partition energy. If they are not, then partition function is just n over uh, integration over all the particles. So, so partition function of n number of particles Chinese people did tell, you know, they do not nothing to worry about India because in most of the Indians are sick, which I think is by and large true. I myself got sick yesterday. So, this is the configuration part and this is the momentum part and then these are function of all R in that we write like that and function of without writing. So, this is the uh, integration that you have to do. So, n particle integration over n vector of 1 to n momentum of n number of this and this is the Hamiltonian. Then you, I hope you understand this is very important because this will be repeated again and again. It will be repeated today and it will be the important class that will start from Wednesday morning with the Mayer's cluster expansion theory. We will use this again and again and again and again and again. Huh? Okay. Momentum 3 and integral here, 3 and integral here and this is the Hamiltonian. In my case, Hamiltonian is just kinetic energy and then you can see this will come out straight with a, since this is additive, I can have to the power n. I hope you understand additive means it is just multiplication. This is the thing. Is it clear this thing how it is happening? because this will happen again and again that is why I am spending some time here. What we have done that since this is sum, all of them have the same mass. Now, I can write it as a product and then the product means there is the n number of them, okay. It is h to the power 3 and here okay. that has been missed. We have to carry, uh, we have to put that back. Uh, this is indistinguishable uh, called Boltzmann factor. He put it by hand. We then we let, uh, quantum mechanics came. It became okay. The basic idea is that you do not get an extra state but just by uh, exchanging two particles in the, uh, by keeping everything identical. So, permutation factor is this time and we have h to the power 3 and and there is a great new reason for h to the power 3n. Anybody can tell why h to the power 3n should be there and must be there. A very uh, nice and uh, elegant, very simple explanation. You guys did take StatMac course, no? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It is close to the answer. Real answer that it has to be dimensionless quantity. See, we put log in front of that. You cannot have a dimensional quantity after log or in exponential, there has to be dimensionless, that is the first thing. Uh, we, we usually ignore that fact very much. Second, that if we actually normalize the volume integration by the volume in the cell and the volume in the cell is given by Planck's constant. And if you do that, this quantity that Q Q is one of them. So, let me say the, so let me also put it here H 3 n n factorial. Then now dr 1 
dp1 e to the power minus beta p1 square by 2m, the ex whole thing in the exponent, this is to the power n because the n particles here, okay. Now, this is volume, this is momentum, okay. Now, if I make now this is L cube, this is momentum cube. If I make length in momentum, then what is the dimension of length and momentum? Okay. So, length and momentum, so dimension of length, dimension of momentum is ML by T, right? Yes. So, this is the, the dimension of, this is also the dimension of the uh, Planck's constant. Uh, so, the uh, momentum L by T, ML by T, energy is ML by T square, ML square, right, that is what I was saying, Some, something is missing, I was mumbling, ML square. Now, in a uh, Planck constant, remember H omega is energy that is ML square by T square, okay. That means we are having that is why H dimension of H bar, if this one T get, goes out, right, you get ML square by T. This is also called the dimension of the action. So, that is the uh, volume in the phase space which is normalized that should be h to the power 3 and here okay now uh, we most of the time don't write it i actually don't like to write that one but it's okay this is the uh, dimensionally correct one has to be so now one does this integration of one particle this is a single particle that decomposition is possible because there is non interacting when you do that then uh, dpx dp dz dx dy dz dz minus beta h. So, one of them, uh, this one gives volume. So, that volume comes out. Then this integration is same integration because next decomposition comes p p momentum square same as px square p y square plus p z square, right. And p x square p y square p z square. So, this integration is this one. What is this uh, in uh, of this integration? Value of this integration? Root over pi by a. Yeah. So root over pi by a means this is one over kBT. Two here, m here. Uh, two pi m kBT. Right? Root over pi by a. A, both are A, this also comes in here, yeah, 2 pi m capital. So, this is the integration. That integration in its full glory comes here and this, since it is root over, 3 of them, 1 to 3 of them becomes cube uh, and since root becomes 3 by 2, if I have to put Planck's constant h to the power 3 in here, that go, goes here at h square, okay. So, this is the small cube. I have to 1 over n factorial in front of the big Q. This is the partition function of the monatomic gas.